my lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to episode number four of the latest Transport Fever 2 series. Today we're starting in the little town of Long Eaton at the main crossroads in the centre of town. Off in the distance you may be able to make out the smoke that is rising from the tool factory that sits on the outskirts of Long Eaton. That's the tool factory we are currently using to, well, supply the tools into Long Eaton and you've probably noticed one or two of the delivery vehicles making their way past as they head into the uh, industrial district, I believe it is, I think it's industrial, to drop off the tools. And there goes one of them now, heading out of town on its way to pick up a fresh load. So where are we then with the overall state of affairs? Well, we have four and a half million in the bank. Of course, that is borrowed money. We have a cash flow of, well, half a million, uh, give or take, which is pleasing to see. And we are in October of 1912. The date is progressing, as we can see. It's just ticked over there, and we are still at half speed on the date progression, just so as not to rush through the eras too quickly and be all done by episode 20. So today's plan of action is to further continue the bedrock of the company. We have three profitable lines, four if you include the delivery line, and all four of those are making us a nice enough profit altogether. So the next thing I would like to do is set down one more foundation line which will be a simple coal into the steel mill line. And again, we're going to utilize road vehicles for this one initially. Over time, this may change to a short rail shunting service, but we don't really have the capital available to greatly expand our rail network at this point in time. It is very much a case of uh, go slow at the moment, which is fine. It's part of the game in the early stages. I think what I'm going to do afterwards, even though I know I've recently said I'm going to avoid it to where possible, but I'm going to look into potentially just keeping the game date paused, but progressing the game itself, if you know what I mean. So we won't tick by any calendar years, but the game will continue to run. The idea being we'll build up a little bit of funds so we can really start to expand. I didn't want to do that too early because if you do it too early I think it just removes any initial challenge that the game presents and uh, yeah once you've done that you can basically do whatever the heck you want. So we'll get this last bedrock line set up and I was hoping to have a separate road there but it looks like we're gonna have to come in and utilize the the existing road that was generated by the game but well, that's okay as long as where we place our station it's close enough that we have the connection point between the station and the coal mine I think everything's gonna be pretty good and I think we should be close enough I'm gonna be planning on putting the pickup point somewhere around here which should be close enough anyway let's continue on and as I did with the stone line I'm looking to avoid removing as many trees as I possibly can and following the natural contours and gradients of the land. That makes it feel a little bit more realistic and also by adding these kinks and curves into the road it also adds an element of realism as well rather than just having a, a bone straight, bolt straight yeah, perfectly straight road, uh, the analogy. It slipped my mind. Anyway, yes, carry on. So we want a pickup point over here, of course, and as I said, I'm hopeful that it will be close enough that it creates a connection, and if we have it here, we can see that indeed it will create a connection. However, the problem is it's going to be quite severely off so unless we put it there let's see does that have a connection yes it does just about it just about reaches you can see the uh, the highlighted color here is quite faded and quite gray 
so it's just about connected but as long as it is that's all that matters now getting two access roads in and out of here might look a bit odd because of the steepness of the terrain uh, let's see yeah uh, no we're not going to be able to do that okay then so instead of doing that we'll just remove that and we'll just have the vehicles come in turn around and head straight back out the same way that they came in it's not the way i like to do it but given the constraints of the terrain we're working with it's the best we could hope for here so we'll rename this to the axbridge coal mines like so and then over here what we want is a drop-off point for the coal so we'll do the usual thing where we have a little loop road if we can build it it's been a little bit awkward there let's try that again yes there we go so our vehicles will travel on the right all the way up here and then come down this way drop off and then head back down to the coal mine so we want an unload point like that that will do and now we can set up this new line so we are going from the axbridge coal mines over to the, uh, the steel mill we'll do the usual setup even though it's not really needed or this will be one to make sure they are fully loaded of course but all of these loading orders it's not really required and this shall be the axbridge coal run what do we have there the Schaffhausen okay that's of no concern to us we don't have any ships on this map and looking at the water we do have it's very unlikely that we will have any ships although I suppose we could just for the sake of it have a little passenger ferry from Axbridge to Hearn Bay but that will be much much later on so for now we can disregard that unlock it adds nothing of value to us so the last thing we're going to want of course is a road depot where we can purchase the vehicles to navigate this line i now realize i should have put that closer to the coal mine but regardless it's in position now and we want to use the ben's tarpaulin trucks obviously we will unlock these in the last episode and to start with shall we go for how much would 25 set us back 3.2 million yes i think that's a decent enough amount to start with send them on the coal run and away they go so this line should generate profits for us i believe it will i don't see why it wouldn't but we'll come back to it later on and just check on it and make sure it is making us a profit in the meantime let's just have a look at everything else yep everything else continues to be nice and profitable as well which is really really good to see so at this point rather than just uh, continue on with these little bedrock foundation lines that don't really do much of anything apart from obviously give you a nice stable base they make you some money but they aren't game-changing amounts of money so yes we have enough of them in place now that we've uh, satisfied that portion of the uh, the game strategy if you will i think it's now high time that we go ahead uh pause the date speed increase the game speed and just let some money accumulate so we can start looking at some uh, more serious levels of investment and expansion the next thing i do have planned would be to either extend this network down into the fuel refinery here or to upgrade these two locomotives and the uh, the consists that they're pulling if you remember we used the basic plm train and the smaller capacity slower speed freight cars for this just to save a bit of money at the initial outset but i think now is probably getting close to the time where we want to look to upgrade them to make sure we can squeeze out every penny possible so yes we'll either look to do that or we'll maintain our current rolling stock and instead expand the line down into the fuel refinery long eaten once again accepts food however as we looked at in the previous episode it's not really feasible for us to get the food down here or at least to get the the grain or the wheat down here at this moment in time so that will have to be something we tackle a little bit later on 
So yes, I'll put a little cut in at this point. We'll come back when we've got a... Should we aim for about five or six million? I think that should be enough to cover to cover off either expansion venture, whether it's extending the line or upgrading the rolling stock. So yes, I shall see you in a few moments when hopefully we have, as I said, about five to six million pounds or dollars available to invest. Okay then ladies and gentlemen we are back and as you can see we've built up to just over five and a half million dollars in available funds to spend on our future and next expansion ventures. This line before we do get started is proving to be nice and profitable, in fact it's our most profitable line that we have earning us a cool half a million every year which is very very pleasing to see indeed uh, because of this it didn't actually take too long at all in order to accumulate the the, the the target amount of money which is really good to see it just say it goes to show that we've made a solid start and as you can see we've managed to bump up our cash flow to around about one million dollars uh, so that's one million dollars net profit per year obviously not including any investments which are one-off purchases anyway so in terms of our next expansion then oh one other thing i did do i noticed that this passing loop here it wasn't quite central so the train heading back to the oil well had to wait i think it was originally around about here the junction so they had to slow down and come to a stop so this train could pass on through. So what I've done is I've just extended the passing loop so they can both flow freely without one of them having to stop and wait for the other one to clear the block. So that's just ever so slightly increased the efficiency of this line, although it's it wasn't ever going to be a make or break sort of situation, but we may as well eke out every little advantage that we possibly can. So what do we want to do in terms of the next planned expansion? Let's see, how much would it cost, do we think, to uh, manipulate these trains and get them upgraded? So if we wanted to go for an outright upgrade, in terms of both locomotive and consist, we would be looking at paying somewhere in the region of, bearing in mind we have 35 capacity here, so well look at that, just to do the one train to, to make it you know, a reasonable looking train, it would cost us eight million per train. So we're not gonna be able to do that. That's uh, that's quite clear. So let's just close that and try again. What we could tend or what we could do instead is perhaps just change the uh, the consists but retain the existing locomotive. That would cost two and a half million and it would increase the capacity by ten and also increase the top speed by six miles per hour. As you can see, it still provides a decent rating for the train. We get to our top speed in 40 seconds on a flat gradient, or just over one minute on a medium gradient, which I think is more than reasonable for these trains and for the journey that they're taking. However, will we see a big uptick in terms of how much profit it's gonna make if we do this? Well, that remains to be seen. Uh, let's just have a quick think about this. So at the moment we have, what's that, two, four, we have seven carriages forming our consist at £30,000 a year apiece. So that's about 210000 overall for the consist. This one we only have five, but they're at, well, we'll call, we'll call it 90, we'll round up. So yes, it's gonna cost us a lot more to run this consist, but the payoff is we are gonna get there ever so slightly faster due to the increased speed. And of course, we are carrying more per journey. Well, I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go with upgrading the consist for these locomotives. We can afford it, 4.879 million. So we'll do that right now and we'll keep an eye on it and what we can do is once it's done a couple of deliveries and we've ticked over a couple of years uh well not in-game years but 12 months if you know what i mean because obviously at half speed it uh it changes how the uh the financial reporting is presented but yeah what we can do is look at this and compare it 
to the recent pass if we set that to five years and then come back in say 12 minutes time uh, hopefully by the time the episode ends we can see what our profit and uh, losses change to and what the margins become and whether they've been increased or not in the meantime we have just over 1 million left in the bank so we could do a little bit more with that uh, we could make a start bringing this line down towards the fuel refinery let me just have a look at the terrain here in fact just to make it a little bit more evident let us turn on the contours layer so over here which is where the bulk of our track would be we're at about mm, yeah about about 90 to 100 meters so it drops down over here but up here we would be jumping up 10 meters to then drop down about 20 meters so if we were going to come this way ideally we'd probably be looking at quite an extensive cutting or maybe even a tunnel the other option is to come out this way but that feels quite a uh, arduous and unnecessarily long route for where we're going and you know if, as a crow flies it's quite a short distance but if we had to take our rail line all the way out here it would be adding quite a few kilometers onto the journey unnecessarily just to save maybe a couple of hundred thousand on the earthworks or the excavation works for the tunnel so that's something uh, we'd have to balance up when we come to that point the other option we could do, and it would be quite cheap and cheerful, is a couple of simple bus loops in the town of Long Eaton. That will have the positive effect of boosting this number, the destination's value, which is obviously going to boost the town population. A boost in town population should increase this demand here from 106. And then that will obviously mean we could have maybe an extra delivery vehicle running this line and we could look at improving this network here as well so we could gain money from this and from this line as well as obviously from the passenger setup in Long Eaton. I think rather than doing a piecemeal job here by only perhaps managing to do half of this extension we will go ahead and go for the bus loop in Long Eaton. And we're going to do it a little bit differently to how I ordinarily would. And what we're going to do is we're going to have three lines. We're going to have a line that comes from the residential areas into the commercial areas. A line that comes from the residential areas into the industrial areas. And then, why the heck not, we'll have one from industrial to commercial as well. So we'd have one two and three rather than having a loop that goes all around the town so let's make a start on that so we want a bus stop and can we get a bus stop in the residential area that has full catchment mm, not quite although that's not too bad so if we had one bus stop there and if we come up this way to there that will be a simple limp, uh, limp, a simple link between our residential area and the commercial sector. We want to do something similar for the industrial, and what we're going to do here is actually have this bus stop on the opposite side of the road, so we don't overcrowd a stop by having multiple services using it. And this one will then come down here, and it will head into the industrial sector like so before heading back so simple two-point stop much like this one here and commercial to industrial well what we'll do here is we'll have that there and it will come up here down this way and then it will stop there so again two stops opposite side of the road from one another so we want a new line so we want to go, let's use a blue for this one because this is going to the commercial district and we want it to go there. What bus stop are you, oh sorry, what side of the road are you using there? 
we want you on number two. So you do have to loop there, which is a little unfortunate, but for a starting point it will be okay. And this will be B4 bus, and this will be the Long Eaton commercial line. Then we want to do another one, and we're going from Victoria Street down to here. And this one will be yellow. And again, let's just check. Your, so you're using platform, I, for want of a better phrase, one, which is correct there. And you're dropping off there on that side of the road, which is all correct. So again, B for bus, and this is a long Eaton industrial line. And then last of all, we want one from Stanley Road into there. And the colour for this one, hmm, that's in... I don't want to go green because that says residential to me. How about a darker blue like that? Yes, that's fine. And you're on the correct side of the road. Brilliant. And this one will be the Long Eaton. And what do we want to call this? What's a fitting name? That's a good question. Apologies for all the banging. The kitties are jumping absolutely everywhere. So I do apologise for that. Yes, um, back to this. Long Eaton. I can't... You know what? It's just going to have to be Long Eaton Line 1. Because I can't think of a more appropriate name right now because I'm trying to marshal kittens, which, uh, as the old saying goes, it's about as easy as herding cats because, well, that's what they are. Anyway, buy vehicles, passenger, what do we have available? I think it would be the, uh, the Gaga now. Indeed, it will. Yes. Shall we have three to start with I think is going to be fine they're only point to point connections anyway so just one per route will do maintenance well let's not do the maintenance yet let's just see how they get on so colour the first one blue and you're onto the commercial line the next one will be yellow you're onto the industrial line and our final one will be the darker blue and you're onto line number one such a creative name. So here come the uh, the new buses and the first buses. Let's just have a a quick look at these, shall we? So just turn around. Looks like it's got a little Toblerone on the roof there. But yes, uh, on a pleasant day, that would be a very very scenic ride indeed. Sitting on the roof of the bus, taking in your surroundings. Perhaps when you're driving through the uh, the industrial areas of town, it wouldn't be the most pleasant due to the emissions from all the factories and what have you. But uh, there you go. On a cross, on a cross country ride, that would be quite pleasant indeed. And that slow down there is very very noticeable. Now, obviously, our buses aren't going to be running down here very often, but our delivery vehicles certainly are. So I think we're going to upgrade that road. Because why drop down to 12 miles per hour unnecessarily? There we go. Now the other buses have all sped up. This vehicle hasn't had to slow down. So that's going to increase efficiency ever so slightly as well. So look at that. We've still got 1.3 million available, which is pleasing to see. Let's see if our newly upgraded freight line has made any new deliveries. Hmm. It's hard to tell whether this is a part year or a full year, and what I mean by that is was the change made during this financial reporting period. So I think what we'll do is we'll wait for this one to report back, and then we'll get a, a, a good overview as to what sort of effect these changes are going to have. In the meantime, our buses are making their way to their designated stops. As we can see, we have passenger pickup quite a lot here. Well, I say a lot, it's 10. But we have people waiting already, which is very, very pleasing to see. And given the fact that we only have one bus per route, hopefully these buses will prove to be quite profitable. Buses never really make or break your financial uh, uh, status. <laughs> 
the mind drew a blank there. But they, they can help. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll wait for the current ongoing financial reporting period to come to an end just so as we can take a look at the uh, oil freight run in Hearn Bay and see exactly what sort of impact our changes are, are going to have had. So to that end we shall uh, pause the date and we shall go to four times game speed just to get through the current financial reporting period as quickly as possible so we can have a good look at what the changes have done for our line. Right, so we haven't actually reached the end of the financial reporting period yet, but we can see here, looking at the line statistics screen, uh, the, it does seem to have had a positive impact because we can see the, the Axbridge Coal Run line, which was originally uh, far and away our most profitable line, it is now alternating between the, the oil freight line that we've just modified and the, uh, the coal run. So it says to me that this has been a worthwhile change. So, and if you can see there, yes, that last reporting period, uh, we did make the changes part way through. Not sure how far through we were, but given the fact we've made more profit already and we haven't yet reached the end of the reporting period, says to me it was done as, uh, on a part year, if you follow me. So hopefully we shall see a true account of the expenses for these new trains or these upgraded trains in the next few minutes it shouldn't take too long yes yes we can see there we've already outstripped last year's reporting period 1.28 in fact there we go we've just ticked over so let's go back to normal speed and to half speed for the date so yes previously what we were doing 1.35 million uh, so about 350,000 obviously fluctuated a little bit between uh, year on year, but for the most part we can see it's around about there. Yep, and we have jumped to 2.4 million, and so over 1 million now. So that was a very, very worthwhile upgrade on those trains, which is great to see. Cash flow now comfortably over 1 million per year, and that's obviously with quite an extensive loan and the increased loan repayments currently set up as well. How are the buses doing? nice and profitable this one isn't but that's fine we can afford one or two to be making a loss especially when it's such a negligible loss compared to all of these so i'm not too concerned by that but it is good to see these two returning high profits they're both full already and in fact we might want to consider having extra buses on these lines uh, maybe well we'll see how it goes we'll keep an eye on it it might just be an initial upswell in demand and it might start to equalise over time and we don't want to oversaturate unnecessarily. Okay then ladies and gentlemen, that's where we shall call a halt to proceedings for today. In the next episode we will look at continuing this line and expanding into the fuel refinery and obviously having these trains then pick up some refined oil here before dropping it off and heading all the way back to the Hearn Bay oil fields to restart their run. So we'll have to be tactical as to how we set up our loading orders over here because we want to make sure they take as much as they can but we don't want them sitting there unnecessarily uh, any longer than they really need to be. So we're going to have to find a nice balance there. So for the cab ride today, we'll take a ride back to the oil fields on this train here. We'll pause the date speed so we don't progress too far or unlock any new vehicles during the, uh, the outro. And we'll hop on board and have a nice gentle ride back towards the oil fields on our newly upgraded trains. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, then please consider hitting that like button down below. It really does help out the channel with the whole YouTube analytics algorithms thing. And if you are new and want to subscribe, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below again so you get access to future content. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, all that remains for me to say is, as always, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.